and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today we're doing a little something different. Mind me, we're getting closer and closer to working on boats. Be patient, we'll get there. Today we're going to be installing in this 2020 RAV4 hybrid some daytime running light modifications slash turn signals. It's going to look pretty damn cool. We're going to show you the before and then we're going to show you the after. Wait a minute. We're going to show you the before. And we're going to show you the after. What we've got is the kit laid out here in front of you as purchased off of eBay. You can look at the link below, pointing you in the direction of where to obtain this. Uh, FYI, this comes with no work instructions whatsoever. And we're gonna have to discover right here now uh, how this works, how it plugs in, what wires do what, and we'll go through that in detail with you. All right, here's some of the tools we're gonna be using uh, to, to assemble and put this in test and figure out what's going on here. You may not need a battery because what after you're done with this video, you're going to know exactly what you need to do wiring wise. But soldering iron, heat gun, screwdriver, crimper. This is a little uh, tool we just rigged up to be able to pop one of the tabs in the in the Rav4 to get it to break to come loose for us. Not break, but come loose. Ten millimeter ratchet with an extension, a little fuse adapter. We'll put a link to that below in the description of what that is. Uh, a ground, some ground loops that we're going to solder, not just crimp. You know me, I don't like to crimp anything. And then a bunch of heat shrink tubing. All right, one very important step is when you plug in the connector in. You got three loose pins here that'll go inside this plug. And you, sorry, and you have to, there's a little catch clip on top here that this will snap over and onto. So... As you can notice here, you got a red, a white, and a black wire here going in that you need, you will need to line up when you insert these pins into this plug so that the red, uh, red to red here and white to white here and black to black here when you plug that in. If you don't do that, your product will not work properly or maybe not work at all. Okay, I'm not sure how much detail we can show you here, but in the plug, as this goes in, like I said, this, this little clips up, so when it plugs in, it catches on this little clip here. But when you're inserting the wire, as you can see, there's a little tiny, uh, I don't know what you wanna call a little spur or whatever sticking up. That you wanna make sure is pointing up toward the clip. And when you push it in, it should go right on in. And oops. it goes in kind of snug. But then it should snap into place. How come it's not snapping? There it goes. And you'll feel it kind of pop into place. And then when you look inside here, you'll see the three prongs sticking through. Um, that will actually go in now and mate with the plug. Okay, the way we have this laid out right now is you can see the lights are sitting right here. This is the where this light in this configuration as you can see displayed like this is going to be on the passenger side obviously facing forward this light here will be on the driver's side facing forward the other thing you're going to see is coming out of this box and this is usa i want to make that very clear because we drive on the uh if you're sitting in the car you're on the left hand side of the car in the usa and so this is what this is what i'm referring to a driver and passenger if you're purchasing it in another country you will have to <clears throat> do it a little differently. The passenger and driver will not make sense. Uh, but uh, what we have now is the long card, long cord here and a short cord coming out of the box. The short cord is going to the driver's side, the long cord where we'll be using for the passenger side. And that's how we will plug it in to do our testing and make sure things work. So we'll plug that one in. And we're going to plug this one in. 
And then we're gonna hook it up to a battery. Uh, the wires in this particular harness are molded in here and you might run the risk of uh, cutting the wire or doing some damage to the wire if you try to get more length out of it. So what I did is I just took a short piece of jumper wire, clamped it to my positive battery terminal here, and I've got the negative coming from the harness hooked to the negative side. And then what we're gonna do then is I'll be able to touch these two wires together to put power to the box to see what the lights do. Sweet. They lit up. So this would be your daytime running setup here. Uh, that when you turn on your daytime running lights, when we hook this all up, this is what will be on along with those. Now, we don't know whether blue or yellow, because we don't have any work instructions to this, is left turn or right turn signal. So what I'm going to do is take the blue one right now and touch it to the positive terminal to see what light lights up. Oh, and that worked. So this would be the blue is the passenger side. So as you can see here, if this is like your turn signal signal coming into the car, this is what it would do. Now, let's just see what happens when we do the yellow. And nice. Driver's side, left turn, please. Cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I suggest folks take your piece of uh, just masking tape, wrap it around your wire, so when you start messing with this, you don't lose track of what you're doing. We're putting a, a big D on here for driver's side. And on this blue one, we'll put a P for passenger. That way we know which turn signal wire to connect these two when we're connecting it to the car. First thing we gotta do is get this grill loosened up so we can access where we wanna place these lights. And there are four 10 millimeter bolts holding this in place. And there's one up here, there, and each side. So this is where our ratchet, I guess we don't need an extension for this, but it just makes it handier for spinning this off. The reason we removed all those screws there, so this, as you can see, will flex now. Please do not over flex it, but what it did is give us access to this little Phillips screw right here. So that's what you're gonna use your Phillips screwdriver for. And you're gonna back that off. I gotta get all my hand in here so I can back it off and not drop it. Oh, come on. There we go, got the screw out. The three little tools we're gonna to use here is I've got this set up an Allen wrench with a vice grip on it and I'll show you where I'm gonna use that at. There's these little tabs right here. You gotta push this one down and it pops loose. And there's another one over here. Push down and then the One trick to do with this as well is to kind of pull it out as you're going so it doesn't re-clip back in. Did you get it? Sweet. There's a little chunk of chunk right there. It's out. Okay, now for this RAV4 for the 2020, we had to do a little modification because the slots here, as you can see on this one, this particular one here, so I get my fingers on it here. If you look at the width across here, right there and there, would not fit in the in the factory slots. So we took a utility knife and trimmed those off on this one here. So as you can see, we just trimmed down, down on all three tabs. The other thing we found out that didn't fit, as you can see, the length of this, let's see if I can get in the view, view here, the length from of this tab right here, I'm gonna go right, the length of that right there was a little too long. So on this one, as you can see, it is trimmed up quite a bit shorter uh, in order to insert and snap into place. So there's a few little trimming mods you might have to do and just trim, try, trim, try until you get it right, until it snaps in. You don't wanna trim off too much and then nothing's gonna hold your light in. All right, with that being said, 
your light wire, your wire goes right through this little uh, rectangle. It's the only rectangle like it on this side. It goes in and hooks to the right if you're facing the vehicle. So if you put the connector on before you put it in here, it makes it much more difficult to get this through here. If you wait to put the connector on after you feed the wire through, it makes the job much easier. Now with that going through that way, and we'll come around over here, and we're gonna hold this wire, and then you can see where it feeds through right here. Just gently pull. You know what? It shouldn't take any, it shouldn't be any resistance here. You should be able to just pull it on in. And that's where we want to be about there. And now I want to come back up here, line up my fixture here, or my light. You should be able to push if you got it set right. I'm not hearing an audible snap. Yeah. So now the next thing you want to do is put that screw we took out right back in here. We're trying to get a shot of it for you. And that holds the right hand side of the light in on the passenger side here. And that pulls it in and it's secure. As you can see there, we've got one installed. Now we got to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, once we get the installation done, then we'll move to the wiring. You want to take your time. You might have to do the trimming like we talked about to get the fit you need to get it so it pops in and stays in place. Uh, the last thing we did is the four bolts we took out so we could flex this front piece. We've now reinstalled those four bolts. So now the installation is complete. Now we're going to work on the wiring. As you can see, we got our two wiring pigtails coming off the light here. We're going to go underneath the hood here and start doing the wiring and showing you how we're going to do that. This is what we bought. This is the part number. We got it from our local AutoZone. And it does not come with fuses, but this will go right in your fuse block in your on your car under the hood. And you have to put two 10 amp fuses not supplied in it. And then it has a pigtail that'll come off here that'll become your new power wire for your lighting system. Right, the next thing to do is get underneath the relay and fuse panel here. Clip, pull this off, pull this off, flip this off here like that. You got all your fuses in here. Here's your fuse puller built right into the lid. Pretty slick. Now what we're gonna do is go after one. We've discovered in here that we had to use the USB, where'd it go? So we're gonna go after the USB two fuse. It's a seven and a half amp fuse sitting right there. And we're gonna clip onto that and pull it out. That's the socket we're gonna use to put our, our, our wire tap onto. Now what we've done here, just to be extra safe, is we've taken out the seven amp fuse. We're just gonna put in two little five amp fuses for now. We're gonna put in two five amp fuses on here. And all you gotta do to connect that then is plug it in. Now this will become your hot wire. That'll come on when we turn our accessories on. And the reason we picked that fuse is because there is no accessory fuse on the RAV4 that we can find anywhere. We've gone into three different uh, fuse and relay boxes on this vehicle, and this is the only one. And this is one we feel safe tapping into. Uh, this LED system is going to draw very little. If you look at the diameter of the wires that are feeding the power to this thing, they are microscopic almost. They are so small. So we're not worried about this being overfused or underfused or anything in between. The other reason we picked this fuse location is because when the power is off, there's no power going through this. And when the power is on on the car, then we do have power. We have our 12 volts. So when you are looking underneath here and looking at this particular panel, you will see something in here that says that it says DRL. And it's not, and it's this fuse right here. It's a 10 amp. It is not a daytime running light. It has 12 volts going through it all the time. So... Don't mistake the DRL as daytime running lights as that fuse. Because we actually pulled the fuse and the daytime running light stayed on. All right, I want to speak to what we found out on this wiring setup here. As you can see, we've soldered a yellow wire onto the blue wire. What we had discovered is that the driver's side wire needed to be short or needed a short wire. And that was the blue wire, which needs to go to the passenger side and vice versa. So what we did is we robbed, as you can see here, we robbed the yellow wire extension because I wanted to use this diameter wire 
and soldered it on here. And we did my normal solder and heat shrink tubing joint here. So we got a nice solid connection. So we can have the length we need to get over to the turn signal. And that's what, that's what we did to do that. As you can see underneath here, we'll start right here at the box. This is our little control box. And we got our power wire coming out. We haven't hooked up yet, but we've done some wire management here. Did some zip ties to keep it tucked up out of the way and nice and neat and clean looking. And the next thing we're gonna do is we pull these bolts back out under here so that the wiring can actually fit underneath this. And there's a little slot back there that you can put it into that will keep the wire from getting pinched when we tighten this back down, but the wire will be trapped and pretty much very secure. Get it in the right spot. First, the first one went really smooth. It's in there, it's there. Okay. There. So now that we can have this nice and tidy here, and we can run it down around on, into the light socket. Okay, our next agenda is to hook our wire up to the turn signal. So underneath here, you can count, turn counterclockwise on this particular model, pop the bulb out and then we're gonna squeeze here there pull that out like that set that aside then i'm going to show you here there's only two wires using this plug and there's a third plug right stuck right in here we're going to stick this right down the middle here We've got a small allen wrench or any small stiff device here and just push this rubber plug out now the rubber plug is out of, out of there The next thing we're going to do is take this wire, run through that hole. Make sure it's nice and straight. And it should come right up through there just like that. Then what I want to do is I want to make sure this is twisted tight. And we're going to bend it over and put it right in this upper left. Stick it right down into that socket like that. Then we're gonna pull this wire back down like that. And then that, then we'll be ready to plug the plug back in after we make one slight modification. I'm gonna show you that now. So what you can see here is there's three prongs in the bottom of this light. If you look at your wiring harness, there's only two wires actually coming in and that's the upper right and the upper left. The bottom one is not being used for anything. When they manufacture parts for automotive industries, they may manufacture and be used in multiple applications. In this application, this center, this bottom plug is not being used. I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers in here, and I'm gonna go in there, bottom out, give it a little twist back and forth, and remove it. So now that it's removed, what that allows that prong, because this wire is coming up through where that prong used to come through. And so we, that's why we had to remove it. So now what we're gonna do is take this plug with that wire shoved down in there and we can plug this right back in now. And now the wire is hooked in and pinched by the clamp. What we're gonna do in here is we're gonna take and fill this hole full of silicone. And that will seal it up and make it back to a watertight uh, connection, which is what you want. All right, we did a little more cable management here. We actually took the yellow wire and routed it underneath the frame here. And then, so it's sitting here. Now we're gonna end up putting a little bit of silicone in here, in that hole, fill it in, and then we'll plug it back in. And when the silicone dries, you've got a nice uh, watertight seal. All right, as you can see here, I got a little bit of clear silicone on my finger here. I'm just gonna, if you've ever repacked a bearing before on a wheel, I'm just gonna sit there and keep pushing some in until I got a good coating in there where I feel real comfortable. And honestly, it doesn't matter if it gets on the other wires. What it's going to help do is glue those other wires and this wire together when everything's sitting in place. Once we get it stuck back into the socket, mm -hmm. it will actually just be a good, nice, tight seal on everything and be still be flexible. So that's all we're doing, and we'll plug it back in. Once you got that done, then you just repeat. Do the same thing for the driver's side. Pull the light out, do everything we just did on the passenger side. Now what we've decided to do good, bad, or indifferent, is we're gonna drill a hole 
below the ribs you see down in here, see if you can see those ribs. We're gonna come down below that because that's where the cover sits down and at least goes down to those ribs. So we wanna be below that, but a place where we can feed the wire through. So I think I've got a spot right here picked out. We're gonna drill a hole right through here. Just like that, you see where the drill came through? This will allow us to feed our positive wire through. Like that. And then what we'll do is we'll make this connection here on these two wires. And that'll be our positive connection. And what that'll allow us to do then is we'll put some silicone back in this hole here and just to make sure we got a nice watertight seal here. And we might take a little toothpick and go down here and put it on the inside and down in this slot here, just to make sure we get a watertight seal. Basically, if water comes through here, it's gonna go down inside this housing. Okay, as you can see, we made our connection in here, routed it around and plugged it in here for the positive. For the negative connection, we have taken it and soldered on an eyelet and heat shrink tube around it and ground and we got a bolt here that's going to the body. So it should ground out very well. We've tested it already, it works very well. And we're gonna tighten that in and that'll complete the circuit and we'll be ready to test it. Oh. Okay, so what we did there folks is we pulled this wire up close so that the black wire is tight up against the housing here. You can see the silicone is still a little damp right now. But we put silicone there and put the wiring up tight against the housing and then we tape. So this silicone is gonna hold this up against there nice and tight and seal it off, plus also help us do a little wire management. As you can see here, job complete. Right turn signal, it does the same with left turn signal. Flashers, it's pretty cool. So it's all done. Take your time with it. This is not a fast project, but I wouldn't say it's an extremely slow project either. But you wanna make sure, you know, it all depends on your mechanical abilities, your ability to run wiring and do things effectively that way. But uh, the results speak for themselves. Uh, it's pretty handy, pretty neat looking. Uh, feel it pretty sporty going down the road. Just even just having these extra daytime running lights on the front here is going to be pretty slick. Uh, also, make you more visible. Should be safer. Uh, but from what I understand about this car, it won't let you run into anything anyway. So uh, I don't know what else to say, folks. But that's uh, that's a wrap for this guy. A wrap for the wrap. So get out there and do something fun. Make sure you take care of your health. I've been having to do that to myself lately and have some fun. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Michael out. <laughs>